my sis back. Ember, I can be either. Okay. Well, how do you both say? That's how you do it. Bye. 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 Okay. Today we are going to do something different. Um, I have a devotional book that I took just a short devotional out of, and it's Walking with Christ Every Day. And it's 365 Daily Devotionals for Women. And I just randomly, I'll be honest with you, I just picked it up the other day. And I just flipped open. And it landed on day 214, Serving Others. And I thought, you know, that sounds like a good topic. And I will tell you why a little bit later of why that kind of stuck with me. But um, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about serving others. And as Christians, we are called to serve others. Are we doing this? Do we serve every day? When we do serve, do we do it just so we can get praise? Or do we serve quietly and unknown to others? In Romans 15, verses 2 and 3, it tells us, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself. And it goes on, but that's where I want to cut it off, right there. So this verse tells us that we need to build up our neighbors. And to, for us to be like Christ, we should all, which was what we're all striving to do. We all want to be good Christians. We all want to be like Christ. We do not need to please ourselves. Because it tells us in the first part of verse 3, Christ did not please himself. Um, <clears throat> so, that's something when I think of serving. We're going to talk about who is our neighbor, what we're supposed to do to our neighbor, and how can we be like Christ when we do this. And I always kind of chuckle a little bit, I guess, laugh uh, when I see the word neighbor um, in the Bible or when we're in Bible class or when we're in church and someone talks about your neighbor. And a lot of people automatically go to their physical neighbor, but I always think of the verse where the Pharisees ask Jesus, well... Who is my neighbor? And we all know the response that Jesus gave. Um, our neighbors are everyone, not just our literal, literal neighbors. Um, I guess I have four literal neighbors, I guess. One in front, back, and two beside me. Well, I only I don't have one beside me. But if I look at it, honestly, my whole neighborhood is my neighbors. Are they not? Um, anybody I come across, anybody I see is my neighbor. Anybody that needs help is my neighbor. And when I stop and think, I know they are my neighbors, but am I helping them? Am I doing what Romans 15, 2 through 3 says? Am I building my neighbor up? Am I being like Christ and not pleasing myself, but caring about others? So how do I build my neighbor up? So I'm going to go to Romans 12, 9 through 21, and we're going to read that. And I don't know if your all's Bible have it, but my Bible um, has like little headings on them. And this is called Marks of the True Christian, which that's what we're all striving to be, right? We're all striving to be true Christians. So we're going to see what it says, and I'm going to apply it to what we just read um, in verse 15 about our neighbor. So 9 through 21, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so 
these are the marks of a true Christian. So we're going to apply it to our neighbors. Okay? And there's seven things. Almost like There's more than seven, but I narrowed it down to seven. And we're going to talk about them. The first one is what it says in verse 9. Very first thing, we need to be genuine. What is genuine? Sincere. Sincere in all that we do. Don't do something because we are forced to do it. Don't do it just to get it over with. Don't do it just to get someone off your back. Don't do it just to say you did it. Be sincere. Want to do it. Want to help your neighbor. Want to be the Christian that you need to be. Number two, we have to be patient in tough times. We all have tough times, and that is when we need our Christian friends the most. The fun times are easy, right? When we can laugh, when we can go on trips, when we can be there with each other, and everything's hunky-dory, everything's great. That's easy. But when tough times come, when it takes the most encouragement from somebody, are we there? Are we being a neighbor during those times? Are we being a Christian to those in need during those times? Thirdly, be constant in prayer. This means daily, every day. Pray what? Pray for our neighbors. Pray for ourselves that we will see a need and meet it. Pray that we are being the Christian we need to be. We need to pray. Four, show hospitality. Um, always have an open door. And I kind of laughed when I wrote that because I think that might just apply to preacher's wives. Um, I've heard that a lot Um your door always has to be open if you're a preacher's wife. You, you always have to be, or a preacher, you have to be readily available at all times. But it can apply to anyone. So I kind of put on there, okay, if you don't, some of us don't like the open door policy. Um, they want to know when you're coming. They want a week's notice. They want to know exactly what you're coming for. You know, how long are you going to be there? What you're doing? What's your purpose? How about just having an open heart to others? Be willing to listen to others. So if you don't want to have the open door, always have the open heart. Don't be so quick to judge um, others or judge other situations without knowing the whole thing. Another way to show hospitality, which everybody knows this, cook food. Maybe just go visit. Maybe take someone to a doctor's appointment. Maybe it's um, just surprising them. I know... Um, we were all sick a couple of weeks ago, or I guess last week. I don't know. Maybe it's a couple weeks ago. Time slows down when someone's sick. And we had someone who dropped off some things at our doorstep. I didn't know it. Um, one time I did because I asked. The second time I didn't know. Hospitality. Show people you care. Doesn't mean they have to come into your house. It doesn't mean that you have to sit down and have a conversation with them. Do something nice. If you see someone in need, do something nice. Show hospitality. Um, fifthly, we're going to weep and rejoice. Again, this is an easy and a hard. It's easy to rejoice. It's easy to um, be excited. Um, the first thing I thought about was if you have a baby or a wedding day or um, graduation all those times are easy. You're rejoicing with somebody. You are happy. Maybe a new job. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it could be anything. And you're rejoicing. It's, you're happy. Those are the easy times. What about the weeping times? What about when something tragic has just happened? There's just been a death. Um, there's just been a tragic accident. Um, devastating news when all we can do is sit there and cry where is our neighbors during that time and it be that um, weeping the ones who know me that are watching this um, I have two very hard days coming up the days I lost both of my parents Different years, different times, same month, same week even. But years apart. Those days there's going to be some weeping going on. Am I going to have neighbors? And that's my situation. I have a literal neighbor who has been weeping a lot because his spouse is in a nursing home. And for a long time he couldn't go see her. Seeing him weep every day. 
talking to him, trying to comfort him when all he wanted to do was see his spouse, those are the hard times. It was really easy the day he came over and said, hey, I get to go see her today. I got a 10 o'clock appointment. It was easy to say, all right, tell her hi. I'm so excited for you. It was easy to meet him when he came home and said, hey, how's she doing? It wasn't very easy to go over there when he's sitting outside crying because he can't go see her. When it's been almost a year and he couldn't go see her. Those were the hard days. Are we there? Are we the Christian we need to be during the hard days? Or are we only there on the rejoicing days? Sixth, we need to live in harmony. Don't cause strife. Don't do it. The verse tells us live in harmony with each other. Live in peace. Do what we can. We talked about this in a couple of devotionals ago. Be at peace with one another. Are we doing that? Or do we strive to cause up trouble? Do we live to stir the pot, so to speak? The lastly, um, the very last verse that we read um, verses, uh, well, what the very last verse, it was, um, verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Do we do that? If our neighbor is hungry, do we feed him? If they're thirsty, do we give them something to drink? That's literal. But what about our neighbors who need to hear about Jesus? Do we give them the gospel? Do we give them the time of day? Not bash it over their head of how they're living wrong or how they're doing this wrong or how they should be doing this, but are we open to conversations with them? Are we open to talking to them about the church and about things going on and trying to get them involved? Are we feeding them the word that they need? Are we meeting the needs of others? Are we aware of our surroundings? Are we aware of what's going on around us, whether it's at the workplace, whether it's at home, whether it's anywhere? Are we aware of our surroundings? Are we aware of a situation and do we just, oh yeah, I know they probably need that. They probably need some help. Great example, school starting this week. There are some that can't afford school supplies. There are some that don't have the funds to go and buy a new outfit or a new pair of shoes. If we are aware of those needs, not saying we can do it for everybody, but do we try to help somebody? And if we can't, do we try to get them help somehow? Or do we just say, oh, not my problem. My child's taken care of. I don't worry about those. Or, oh, I go to Fulton. I'm not worried about the ones in Tremont. Or I'm not worried about the ones in Dorsey or Fairview or wherever. Do we meet the needs of others? If we do these seven things, then we are serving our neighbors. Can we say we are doing these seven things? Are we genuine? Are we patient? Are we praying daily? Do we show hospitality? Do we... Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Are we living in harmony? And do we meet the needs of others? We are called to do these things daily. Let's be the Christian God is calling us to be and serve others like he has told us to do in the Bible. And I'm going to close with actually reading the devotional that was in um, the book I showed you at the beginning. But I told you at the beginning I would tell you why serving popped into my mind. There is a lady that I had met one time, and long story short, her husband had COVID, has COVID, and they have been fighting battles, and she's been doing Facebook Lives two, three times a day, trying to keep people updated. Long story short, he died Monday, and it broke my heart. I've never met this man. I've met her one time, have never met their children, but how the responses I saw of people writing to her and meeting her needs, the ones crying with her, the ones rejoicing with her. She asked for pictures, the overflowing amount of pictures that she's getting, the amount of cards. She would show us stacks of cards she would get daily um, that people were thinking of her. Just so many people. Um, she would sometimes do her videos in the hospital and just her needs being met just kind of blew me away. And it made me take a step back and I talked to Matt about it, and I hope we're never in that situation. But if we are, I tell Matt, you know, she's in a pretty good spot. She's got several people there for her, 
um, physically. Some of them are miles away. Like she's in Texas. We're in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Um, Several, several states away. And she still has people serving her. And that just had me thinking. So I thought it was kind of ironic when I opened this up and I saw this devotional. And I just kind of thought about her and all the stuff she's going through and how much she's going to need people to serve her in the upcoming months and years. It just made me think about, um, as a Christian, am I doing all that I need to be doing to serve others? And so this one says, the title of it is Serving Others. And it says, each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waited right in and helped out. I took on the troubles of the troubled, is the way scripture puts it. And again, that is their um, version of Romans 15, 2 through 3. But this is the devotional thought. We live in a world that glorifies power, prestige, fame, and money. But the words of Jesus teach us that the most esteemed men and women in this world are not the self-congratulatory leaders of society, but are instead the humblest of servants. Today, you may feel the temptation to build yourself up in the eyes of your neighbors. Resist that temptation. Instead, serve your neighbors quietly and without fanfare. Find a need and fill it, humbly. Lend a helping hand, anonymously. Share a word of kindness with quiet sincerity. As you go about your daily activities, remember that the Savior of all humanity made himself a servant, and we, as his followers, must do no less. I really like, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't want to be known for what I do. I just want to do it, you know, secretively, I guess, like the person who left stuff on our doorstep. Um, I didn't even know they were here. Um, but the gesture meant more than anything in the world. And um, I'm using that example because that's the most recent example that I have. But I love where it says, serve your neighbors quietly and without fanfare. Do it. We're called to do it. Not announce it to the world. Not tell everybody, hey, look what I did. Or, oh, I got to go to the store because this person is sick and they need popsicles. And they need Sprite and they need crackers and they need this and they need that. Oh, I wish, you know, I didn't have to go do this. No, do it quietly. You get when that someone's sick, you get someone that's had surgery, send a card. Send a text. Say, hey, I was just thinking about you today. Find a need and fill it. I think that's something I definitely, I need um, every day. Find a need. There's a need out there. Find it. Um, Lend a helping hand. That's something that you could see anywhere. You can see it driving down the road. You can see it in your workplace. You can see it at the grocery store. And we went to Walmart today, and there was millions of opportunities to lend a helping hand to somebody. Share a word of kindness. And that made me think of the cashier today. Um, she was having a rough day um, this tax-free weekend, and she said some people were just downright rude. She was having a rough day. Share some kindness. Be nice. Um... And as it says, as you go about your daily activities, remember that above all, Jesus made himself a servant. So if Jesus can make himself a servant, I can make myself a servant because I'm supposed to be more like Jesus. I should strive to be more like Jesus every day. So this week, I want us to find ways to help serve somebody. Um, Like I said, whether it be a card, a phone call, a text message, a surprise visit, um, Just whatever. Um, Like I said, I've used this example before. Our trash guys, it's hot. It is hot. And I felt sorry for one of our trash guys this week. He was the only one. Usually we have two on the truck, and there was only one. And um, if you're fortunate enough to be home, take them some water, some Gatorade, something cool. And um, they appreciate it. They really do. And um, that's one of Elizabeth and Austin's favorite things to do is to meet the trash men. I mean, that, that's the highlight of their Tuesdays and Fridays. They wait. They wait for that truck to come. And they open that door and they got running. And it just, they're showing kindness. And there's millions of things. Your mail carrier, stick something in the mailbox. Just say, hey, thanks for what you do. They have a tough job too. They have a tough job. Um, there's different things like that. I mean, your coworker, your boss, just slip a little note. Thanks for what you do. 
if you and it can be anonymous well they might know your handwriting if they're your boss but you know there's little things you can do um always say a kind word especially if you work in the public just a kind word just a kind nice polite word so anyway i'm rambling so i'm gonna quit but this week just work on serving others think of opportunities because like it said there is always a need always a need find it and fill it Thank you all, as always, for listening, and I will see you all here next week. Have a great day, or a great week.